prophecy too. He didn't know it. But he can never know it to the extent that you'll have it. See, God gives you revelation. God does not give Satan revelation. You may need to know that too. He is very limited. But if you slip over into his territory, you may rip to shreds. So don't you think it pays to investigate how the world right now is worshiping the dragon? Because in the earth, if they worship the beast, and it says and they worship the dragon too, then guess what? What is it telling you? That Satan is in fact possessing the kingdoms in this earth. That's why. That's why in Revelation, later on in Revelation, it says the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. That's why in the Gospels of Jesus Christ, it says that Satan is the prince of this world. He, it calls him the God. Paul called him the God of this world. And he was speaking in the context of all these man-made nations. So you may not know this, but God will undo his own vineyard. Because he said his vineyard was, was supposed to bring forth grapes. This is Isaiah 5, but it brought forth wild grapes. See? He's going to change. He's going to purge his vineyard. Because Satan crept his little tingly fingers in there too. Mr. Leviathan himself. The beast of the sea. The sea are the many peoples, nations, tongues, and languages of the earth. The beast of the sea, Leviathan. In fact, we read that before, didn't we? Did a scripture reference that in fact, Leviathan is that piercing serpent, the devil. Oh, this might get interesting. You have to know there's no need to fear him. He's been dethroned. Lest you serve him. If you're in his kingdoms, you have everything to worry about. But if you're not, you have nothing to worry about. Christ overcame him. If you be in Christ, you too have overcome him, not by your own power, but by the power of Christ. Also, Satan is a fugitive. How many of you know that? He's a fugitive. He does not hold the title he used to hold. He's a fugitive. The demons ran away from Christ, just like they run away from those who abide in Christ. Satan faced Christ during the temptations because Christ was led into the desert to be tempted by him in the first place. He overcame him. That's when it was proven that Satan had nothing in Christ. He couldn't tempt him. See, if Satan can tempt you, he has something in you. Jesus said, the prince of the world cometh and he had nothing in me. That's when he was about to die. But what you need to find out is, wait a minute, does Satan have an investment in me? Because if he does, his worship is also going to be within you. And if it is, you need to recognize it and do away with it. Wouldn't you say? Don't get scared. Oh, I've done something wrong. No, guess what? You were born into this world. You were children of death and sin. Jesus came. When you said yes to the Lord, you began to abide in him. He brought you into life everlasting. You only have life because of Christ. Before Christ, you were in death. You, yes, you. But you were sent here in death that you may find life. How about that? You're going to be proven innocent and not guilty. Oh, I love that part. You can call me guilty all day. All of you can call me guilty. I am guilty as charged. But by the blood of the Lamb, in the end, if I abide in Christ, he will say not guilty. How about that? You can call me guilty. You can lock me up and do what you want to do. But you're not my issue. Nor do I give you reverence. My mind is stayed upon Christ. You see, I need his approval, not yours. I need him to say not guilty in truth. Not your accusations of flesh.